Hello and welcome to the workshop on short film scholarship. Um, my name is Samir and I'm going to moderate today's session. Um, I'm going to quickly go over the outline of the session, uh, but before I do so, just uh, a reminder that this meeting is being recorded on active speaker mode. So if you unmute yourself and speak during the meeting, you will appear in the recording. Um, if you have any questions uh, that you would like to ask without appearing in the recording, please drop them in chat and I will read them out to the panelists today. Um, with that, uh, this is the outline. I'll quickly introduce Project Edu Access and then uh, make you meet the wonderful panelists for today. who are then going to um, take you through the scholarship, the eligibility requirements and, and application process in detail. And then they're going to leave you with some um, general tips. And then we will have a free flowing question and answer ses session towards the end as we generally do. And I encourage you to ask any questions that you have about the Schwarzman scholarship process uh, uh, to our wonderful uh, panelists. Well, those of you who are new to uh, our workshops, Project Anu Access is um, a nonprofit organization that works at um, increasing inclusivity and representation in higher education leadership and professional spaces. And we do um, this primarily by running uh, a mentorship program and um, a lot of advocacy um, in addition to running all of these workshops. Um, so if you're not connected with us, highly encourage you to um, connect with us on social media, especially in Instagram, which is where you will find a lot of information about the work that we do, both about um, online workshops in-person workshops, advocacy work that we do, and the mentorship program that we run for students belonging to marginalized communities. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce you to the panelists for today. Um, we are joined by Ragini Rao, uh, who is a Shortman Scholar from the year 2022-2023, and um, Manthan, again, a scholar, Shortman Scholar from 2022-2023, and Nidhi, who has just taken um, her um, place um, on the Schwarzman Scholarship this year. Um, it should actually say 2023, so um, uh, sorry about that. Um, but uh, the, these three wonderful scholars are going to take you through the process and tell you everything that you need to know about the Schwarzman Scholarship. With that, then let me hand over to Nidhi, and who is then going to hand over to Ragini, and then to Manthan, and then we will all come back in the question and answer session and take your um, questions. Um, over to you, Nidhi. Everyone, my name is Nidhi. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm just gonna go through uh, a few of the slides talking about what the Schwarzman Scholarship entails. And then I'll probably just add in my perspectives on um, each of the key points that I'm going to bring up. Um, so feel free to like take notes or if you have any questions, um, I'll answer them at the end. So the Schwarzman Scholarship is a fully funded one year master's program. It's a managed, it's like a master's of management sciences with a concentration in global affairs. That's the official title of the degree that you get at the end of this uh, program. And it's fully funded. It's in the, it's in Beijing at Tsinghua University, which is the number one university in Asia. It's ranked number one uh, by US News and it's got one of the best like engineering departments in the whole world. And it's an incredible place. The scholarship supports uh, up to 200 scholars annually from around the world, from US, China, and uh, the rest are, are termed global scholars. So scholars from India would officially be called global scholars. And this year's cohort, we have 141 scholars, and we just moved in one year ago. So i um, very excited to begin this experience. It's designed to build a global community of future leaders who are um, invested in gaining a um, in like in person in depth ex like experience with China, um, and it's supported by uh, a philanthropist Steve Schwartzman. You can read up on him, and he basically believes that understanding China is the key to understanding how to conduct global affairs, uh, both in like terms of diplomacy, in terms of uh, tech innovation, in terms of kind of bringing together people from around the world to make global change. All of these things require a an in-depth understanding of Chinese values and Chinese political structures and um, economics. So that's kind of the, the primary goal for the initiation of the Schwarzman Scholars Program. 
uh, formal eligibility, eligibility um, you have to have an undergraduate degree or be on track to complete all your degree requirements before for August 1st of your enrollment year. So most of you who will be applying, you'll be applying for the 2024 to 2025 year. And there are um, age limits. So you have to be at least 18, but not yet 29. So the oldest people in my cohort are 28 years old. Um, and you must have, you must demonstrate strong English skills. And this can usually be through um, international language testing like TOEFL or IELTS. Um, but if you've also studied in English medium schools in high school and college, then you automatically are seen as having strong enough English skills to be able to apply for the program. And requirements are that, oh, next slide, please. Requirements are that candidates um, have to meet um, certain certain requirements in terms of like application criteria are leadership abilities, exemplary character and integrity, academic aptitude and intellectual ability, empathy, open mindedness, entrepreneurial spirit. So one of the tips that I would offer up to to applicants who are interested in this program is to make sure that different aspects of your application highlight at least one of these activities in detail. So as, as we'll bring up later on in the presentation, there are multiple ways in which you can highlight each of these um, activities and the ways you've demonstrated them through participation in uh, school clubs or in organizations that you've founded or in community or service um, initiatives that you've undertaken. So you need to articulate why China and why specifically participating in the Schwarzman Scholars Program will help you uh, fulfill your career goals as well as the vision that you have for the world. Um, and that's kind of like the more like abstract requirements for the program. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the application pro the, the application itself includes a lot of different um, avenues in which you can talk about all the things, all the incredible things that I'm sure all of you have done throughout your life. Like the personal information section is just the um, just basic info. I'm gonna highlight on that. Like about there's an about me section. There's an education section. Um, and these slides will be sent to you so you guys can like peruse this and see what all will, is, is, in, is involved in the application process. But uh, to go in depth, next slide please, the, the personal information section basically includes your biographical and contact information. I think you can highlight all the places you've lived in in the past, um, all the languages that you speak, I think is also an aspect of this, of this section. Um, it's been a year since I've completed the application, so I'm relying on memory at this point. But you must list your legal name, your nationality, your gender, your place of birth, and date of birth exactly as they appear. Uh, a key thing to note about the Schwarzman Scholars Program is that you're classified as a global U.S. or Chinese scholar solely based on citizenship. So if you have permanent residency in um, other countries, that does not count as your primary citizenship or like the way you identify as. It's only based on your nationality. Like what does your passport say um, you are? So if you have an Indian passport, you will be classified as a global scholar who is Indian. Uh, it, it required also to provide your current address and a lot of like uh, private details where they can like, they need your mailing address and things like that. So, um, and also it's it's highly recommended that you apply for a passport right before you um, finish the application process, because it's important that you get that in um, because everything moves at a fast pace. So the next section is the about me section. And this is kind of like, these are the areas of the application where you can really Really talk about um, the aspects of you that make you a good candidate for the program. This includes like your biographical profile, your resume, or your curriculum vitae, and your video introduction and interest. So, fun fact: the application process keeps changing every year. So, for my application, we did not have a resume section. We just had a leadership experience section. Um, and our, our biographical profile was touted to be like one of the most important parts of our application. It's a hundred word bio of the kind of things that you're, that you've done throughout your life. And the main point of the biographical profile is to summarize your whole application into a few key points. It's kind of your elevator pitch. So make sure that your biographical profile highlights your specific research interests, or your specific um, entrepreneurial goals, and make sure that when people read your profile, they're able to come away with one or two keywords about you that they can remember your application by. Uh, similarly, a resume should be detailed. I'm assuming it can be one to two pages. Um, you can ask questions about that later on as well. Um, your video introduction is also like an, an optional part of the application process, but it's recommended that you do make one. I think this is your this is your time to talk about your 
personal interests and um, make you seem like a well-rounded human being and interests as well. So the next section is the education section. Um, next slide, please. Your education section is basically where you talk about all post-secondary institutions. This includes any like master's um, or college degrees that you got, would have gotten. So your BA or your BS, as well as your MA, MS, whatever, um, all the schools that you've attended after high school. And that's what you list in the education section. And you will need a transcript for all of this as well. Um, it was kind of a contentious point that you might also have to provide transcripts for programs in which you did summer courses after college or um, temporary like credit, credit earning courses or programs that you might have participated in after you completed your high school education. Um, and you need to mention your um, GPA and you also do not have to, you don't have to list certification programs, but if you've received credit from any, pro, from any particular study abroad program or anything, it's recommended that you mention it. Also, GPA is not a hard and fast uh, um, uh, kind of requirement in terms of getting a particularly high GPA that's not necessarily like a big factor in the Schwarzman Scholarship Program, unlike a lot of other internationally competitive programs. Schwarzman gives you more leeway in terms of accounting for your personal life when they look at your overall GPA. So if you had tons of years of work experience um, in between your last GPA um, producing like educational experience, they're going to keep that in mind. The next section is language skills. So here you can list up to three additional languages apart from English or your native language. And um, it is recommended that you that you list languages when you have the highest proficiency because uh, some of the programs that we've been exposed to at Schwarzman College have been focused on, um, have been divided up by language. So people who are interested in learning specific languages. Um, so if you've taken like two or more years of study in particular languages, it's recommended that you list it. Um, and finally, when it comes to what I would argue is one of the most important sections in the application, um, leadership roles. So here is your chance to showcase up to five leadership roles that illustrate your demonstrated leadership experience. Um, and these leadership roles can honestly be fully dependent on what you value your personal brand of leadership as. This can be something as you being a thought leader by you writing a book or um, you working as like an, um, on the executive board of clubs at your university, or you being the founder or co-initiator of a big organization, both on campus at your previous educational um, institution or outside of campus after you've graduated from college. Um, here is your chance to kind of expand on all the things that you've done in the past, like the five key things that you've done in the past and to include like numerical analyses. Like it's important for you to include clear deliverables that you worked on as well as like numerical indicators. Like it's best to stay away from like fluff words and uh, passive language when you're, when you're writing down your leadership roles. It's best to focus on clear indicators of progress. Like you have served like 500, 1,000 people or you have um, like you have fundraised more than like $2,000. Like it's important to inc include like clear indicators of success when you're writing down your um, leadership role. So make sure that these are detailed and that you put active thought into what you're listing down uh, in your leadership role. So with that, I'm gonna pass it on. Thank you. Great, thanks Nithi, that was super helpful. Um, okay, so the next section we're talking about is the awards and recognition. Um, you have up to five awards that you're allowed to list here. They don't have to be something that has something, something prize, something, something award in it. You can list the scholarships, you can list recognitions, you can list um, special publications or mentions in published work. Um, you can list honorary positions that you've received that function like an award. Um, so it's a pretty broad definition of what awards and recognitions can be. Um, the only recommendation is try to list it in a combination of chronological order and degree of importance. Um, even if you won something great in school, it might not carry as much weight as something that you've won more recently, even if the name is less prestigious. Um, so use your discretion. You have five and space them out whatever way you'd like. Um, we can go to the next slide. Professional experience, this is only for people who have full-time professional experience. Um, it's important to remember that Schwarzman has a very broad age base, so you can be coming straight out of your undergraduate degree. You can have several years of work experience, um, and you're still equally eligible, qualified to be putting in an application. 
However, if you're listing professional experiences, it has to be full time. Um, please don't list internships here. Don't list volunteer experiences, um, other short term work. Um, remember that you're putting in a CV as well. So don't essentially copy paste what you're putting from your CV. Um, but you do want to make sure that you are as specific as possible about the nature of the work that you're doing. And most important, make sure there are no contradictions between what you're saying on your CV um, and what you're saying over here. The internships, the part-time experiences will be in your CV. Here, make sure you get your dates, the titles, the official names of what you're doing in complete sync with each other. Um, yeah, we can move on. Essays, um, I'm not going to say any part of this application is the most important part, but the two essays are definitely the most substantial. And for most of us applying, it is the most time consuming part of what we do. Um, you're expected to turn in two major essays. One is a 750 word leadership essay, and the other is a 500 word statement of purpose. And these are um, probably the main ways through which the panel gets to know you. Um, you also have two short answer responses of 100 words each. You'll notice that these are fairly tight word counts. Um, 100 words is not a lot. 500 is also not a lot. Um, and so the task is to, to have a very clear idea of what you want to say. Um, if your main goal idea is not clear, then it's very obvious in a 500 or 750 word um, write-up. Um, you don't have to cite things. You don't have to put down citations. It's not an academic output. Um, and you do, really don't need sort of um, any sort of substantiation for what you're saying. Just make sure that you stick to the deadline. It's not around 100 words. It's exactly 100 words. Um, yeah, we can move on. Okay, so let's get into the leadership essay right now. Uh, the leadership essay, along with one or all of your recommendations, um, is an important insight into three or one of the three major prongs of your application. You're basically trying to tell the panel that you are A, a leader, B, have some sort of connection or an interest in China, C, committed to glo the global affairs component of this application. And the leadership essay, um, while it may end up speaking to all three, is essentially about that first prong. You want to be able to talk about a specific instance, incident, experience, um, learning, lesson, anything, in your life that you view as a moment in which you have either displayed leadership or learned something about leadership. It is important to remember that here leadership is defined as you define it. This does not have to mean a formal office. It doesn't have to mean um, you were elected to something, you were appointed president of your council in college or something like that. Um, basically anything that you define as leadership. And so essentially the task with the leadership essay becomes A, justifying that what you did is leadership. B, um, showing that there was some form of growth, something that contributed to your general understanding of leadership through this particular experience or incident. Um, and I think above all, the best possible advice here is to be as honest as possible. Know what you wanna say going into it and just be organized, clear, um, and make sure you get to that point as quickly as possible. Um, we can move on to the next one. Here's what to avoid. Um, the task of the leadership essay is to talk about what you did or what the leadership experience meant to you. So you don't have to give people too much context. They don't have to understand the exact functioning of the organization that you led or like how you came to be elected to something. The details that go in should only be those that contribute to that final leadership image that you're trying to paint and no more. Um, again, don't limit yourself to those formal offices, um, official names. The whole point of the leadership essay is to show that leadership can mean a lot of different things in different cases. I know people have written an essay about how they had to display leadership at home because they had a sick grandparent and their parents were not around um, and they had to grow into being a leader in the family context as well. Anything is leadership if you can make the case that it's leadership. Um, I would also say, however, make sure you get the scale right. Things like cultural miscommunication while traveling. Yeah, great example of something that is an everyday occurrence, probably not leadership unless you can make the case. Um, and make sure you get something that is slightly long-term. Don't focus on a single momentary incident, but something that shows a journey of some sort. Um, yeah, we can move on. Statement of purpose, 500 word cutoff. That's much less than what you think it is. I think I know a lot of people whose first drafts for a statement of purpose were a thousand words and they had to cut, cut, cut. Um, so I think, 
for both these essays, for the statement of purpose in particular, it's a good idea to, before you put pen to paper and actually write out a draft structure, know what the crux of what you want to say is. Um, you can treat this as basically the first introduction that the panel is getting to you. They will read every component that you have, but the statement of purpose truly encapsulates why you, why Schwarzman and why the program benefits from giving one of its seats to you out of so many other applicants. Um, so make sure that you are not just regurgitating your CV and your resume here. They have that already. You need to be saying something in this that's not already there or in your leadership essay. Um, and most people tend to use the statement of purpose as a chance to show what is that one cause they're most passionate about in the world. But honestly, that is, you know, there is no set template as to how to write the statement of purpose. Um, yeah, we can move on. The short answer questions are again a, a masterclass in brevity and like snappy communication. They have a hundred word limit and the specific question changes every year. Um, the aim here is to just provide a level of insight that is not being captured in all the other written submissions that you are doing. Um, I, I think the best possible advice we can give you looking at the short answer questions is treat your application as a whole. Um, between all the components that are available, they need to understand who you are, what your passions are, what you want to do in the world. So as you work backwards from there, figure out if there are things that you'd like known about yourself that are not being said in the other two pieces. It does not have to be something purely professional. You can talk about how you love to cook. You can talk about your interest in painting. You can talk about your favorite author, but make sure it's contributing a level of nuance to who you are and why this makes you a well-rounded um, applicant for this program. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Manthan can take over now. Thank you, people. Thank you, Ragini. That everything that you said is super insightful. And honestly, listening to both of them, I, I wish I had this insight when I was applying to the uh, to, to the program. But uh, now coming to the recommendations part, so you need three application, three recommenders for um, the whole application. So choose wisely. Like each one of them should demonstrate a part of your personality that is very uh, very unique perspective and that and also choose people who can substantiate on like they can vouch for your personality and they don't have to be say a very highly highly ranked people so this will give you a story like when like last year we were in in Schwarzman and uh, the like the admissions people there told me that told us that they get letters of recommendation from very big personalities like princes or kings of a kingdom or like prime ministers of countries and like they used to get like hard copies of like you know royal seal and everything in it but they those recommendation letters would be very brief and you know would say something like very uh high level like i recommend this person so the admissions people although were taken aback they wouldn't really find those recommendations letters as useful as compared to the ones that, you know, your very close teacher would have sent or a mentor would have sent or a, a sports coach would have sent or something like that. So choose people uh, who can really, you know, speak at length about you. I had three recommendations. One, one was a dean of my undergrad institution. One was the editor of my book. And the second, third was the, the founder of the institution that I was working at. And one mistake that I did was... I asked them for a letter of recommendation two days before the deadline because I literally got to know about Shores and Applicate program just like a week before the deadlines were due. So the, my whole application was completely chaotic. So please don't do that. Please don't reach out to your uh, referees like two, three days in advance. Reach out to them now or at least like a month in advance and keep following up with them. Um, yes, we can move on to the next part. Additional information. So if you need to clarify something about your application, this is a good place. So um, for this, like I think a lot of people have used it to justify if they had gotten a lower grade or if they had some circumstances due to COVID or loss of uh, family, then you know they give some more background about their story here. Um, also, this like there was a part where Dragon is talking about additional like the small essays, those like 
you know, just know that every reviewer will look at your profile as one long PDF file. So they'll read everything related to you. So, you know, use each of these additional information in the short essays uh, strategically to portray some part of your life. For example, in my short, like 100 word essay, I spoke about um, what means a lot to me in terms of building, like, you know, something that is not reflected in my resume. So that was a story of, I took a gap year be be between my high school and college and all I took a, quite a few jobs in those in that gap year but that was not reflected in this in the resume so I spoke about how like I did that job and I got so close to the to the founder of that organization that he made me the godfather of his son and I aspired to form those kind of relationships with at, at every workplace or um, at, at every project that I'm involved in so like someone remembered that when I got in and they actually, you know, bought, brought that up. So like every small bit of information is kind of truly, you know, looked at, at that. Thank you. Next uh, slide. Interviews. Um, so I think 10% of the applicants roughly get invited for the interviews. Uh, it, in my year, some three, 1,500 to 4,000 applications applied and 400 were invited for interviews and we had an online interview at that point. But you will get like a list of people who could be on your panel or deep in advance. Um, and like don't get overwhelmed because these would be people from literally the leaders, the CEOs, the chairman of in big investment banks, people at the United, United Nations, in, you know, heads of states, business leaders, heads of universities, so on and so forth. So don't get overwhelmed. Uh, there's only one interview. Uh, the interview is divided into two parts. One, the first 20 minutes is about, will be about just your profile and things that you've written about your in your interview, uh, in your application. So for me, a lot of the questions were involved. Um, my leadership uh, initiatives back at school, the book that I was writing, um, and a lot of like, you know, prompting questions on what, what leaderships, what morals, what va values do I have? And the last five minutes are, uh, are scheduled for a global affairs question. So they'll ask you questions about global affairs completely opposite to what you might expect. Like people who are, like people who were in politics or policy making were asked about AI or like I was asked about I had no idea, but I was asked about how would I make the world less polarized? So you just cannot expect any of these questions, but the best way to prepare for these interview rounds would be firstly go through everything, every document that you have written. Um, like, you know, you should know word by word what you've written because they might ask questions about anything. And for global affairs, you know, keep reading The Economist, Wall Street Journal, so on and so forth. Um, to be aware of what is happening in the world and like you know form your own opinions about things uh next slide please yeah this was something i already covered we can move on some faqs so what is the most important part of the application and what will the selection committee focus on there's absolutely no like single most important part everything is looked upon very much in depth they look for but one thing that they truly look for is vulnerability and sort of the distance that you have traveled. So it is not important to them if you've necessarily been, uh, you know, have won these titles or these awards, but if, you know, come a vast distance from your roots until what you're doing right now. And if you can portray that in your application at every, every level, that is something that they really look out for. Um, as like, as Nidhi also mentioned, GPA for like, Academic excellence is, of course, required, but I don't think it is. there's a minimum or maximum GP or rank in class. And this is especially true for people who have had some work experience. So for them, um, I'm not, I don't think like your GPA matters all that much. But of course, it, strive for good GPA if you're in the last year of your, of your college. Uh, next. General tips. As we said, the applications have many components. Uh, they're all submitted and reviewed together. So... Look at the application as a whole and like you know try to best portray your part of your personalities and characteristics in each of those things um yes three main components leadership global affairs in china 
make sure your recommenders kind of portray every part of your life at at depth and and the video so um nidhi briefly mentioned about the video in the first part of the of the session but you know really i would highly recommend you making the video and having a lot of fun so i giving i was just make writing and doing everything about the application in the last two days so i'm i made a video but in in the process of doing things very fast i had to write a structure to be efficient so for that i kind of saw all the public videos that were available on on youtube and kind of so which ones got into the shortman program and i had left a list of like 10 videos that were popular publicly available and were successful and so i kind of observed they had like these three traits in them so i so i came up with like a 2020 20 rule for myself like two years ago so um the first part like you know the first 20 seconds like this is just personal recommendation like you don't have to take it up you make your video which is completely true to yourself but what i did and what worked for me was first 20 seconds talking about general titles that you've had or like the way the world perceives you the second part being how you perceive yourself so like Uh, if the world sees me as a table tennis player or a, a writer i look at myself as someone who truly totally enjoys teaching um talking to people so i said how i enjoy working at an orphanage and teaching table tennis there and you know things that i do for fun and the last 20 seconds were kept for things that i could bring on table so i like i had three things going for me at that point um podcasting writing and table tennis so i said how podcasting could bring a, a, a storytelling to the cohort um writing could bring sort of perspective from rural india but also like you know consolidating all the ideas together and table tennis could bring the energy of an athlete um so but enjoy with with the video part moving on yes open for questions excellent thank you so much uh, mangsan nithi and ragni for this wonderful uh, presentation and i think um you've covered quite a lot in this um, session and i'm sure there are questions that participants have so um without further ado let's move on to questions and as i mentioned this meeting is being recorded so if you do speak in the meeting you will appear in the recording therefore if you want to ask a question without appearing in the recording just put them in chat and i will read them out um i'm going to quickly um move to baskar baskar um you can ask a question yeah i have specifically i hope i'm audible i have the question go for it go for it hello hello am i audible now yes yeah so i have three questions and i want each of you to sort of give me your perspective uh, which is when you answer why china does it have to come under sop does it it have to come under leadership or short answer or it has to be consistent throughout because we need to answer why china but where in what component is my question one should i go ahead with my second question or sh yes. should i wait for the next all at once would be better actually okay my second question is basically uh see when we come down to cv uh, i have generally seen and heard of from quite a few people that it should be very much standard and a so called a harvard style cv that people sort of follow to a lot large extent but the, at the same time i've also heard some people saying that you can maybe play with your cv make it little color tone maybe put your picture just to make it slightly more unique for people to remember you otherwise it just too many cvs were all black and white and people don't capture it so this is my second question that would you recommend me having a constant black and white like a harvard style cv or playing would be recommended is my question number 2 um my question number 3 um is basically that it says minimum 3 letter of recommendations but at the same time it can have four because there are people who have submitted four so would you say would you recommend having a fourth one as well or would you just say let's stick with three and and go ahead with that 
and lastly um, is again i think with respect to this is this might be a little tricky question which is uh, with respect to the additional comment of 200 words uh, do they ask you for the mitigating documents for example if you are suffering from any mental health disorders or anything for that matter do they ask you to furnish a updated document on any front uh, yeah that's that's my question thank you so much great any of you go for it uh, i can so do we answer or yeah oh sorry go ahead Rodney. Oh, okay uh i can ask the first question um and then i'm sure you would want to hear uh, everyone's input but when it came to talking about why china i put it in my personal statement and i kept my leadership essay focused on my specific leadership experiences i would suggest that you mention um your why china statement wherever it fits in like if you have leadership experience specifically relating to china then you can mention it in the leadership essay and if you have like if you don't and if you just want to talk about your aspirations as related to china then you can put that in your personal statement and just frame it as what you want to do when you get here um and what was your second question sorry for oh, my second question was question. with respect to the cv right actually um if manthan and bragani want to go ahead just let's just go that way Sir, I'm happy to go. Um, fully agree with Nidhi um, as far as the why China component is concerned. Look, I think on China, for everyone, the relative importance of China in their respective applications is different. There are a lot of people for whom the purpose of the program is the China component. They're coming to Schwarzman because they get to come to China. Um, I was not one of those. For me, I was very honest that my interest in China is to the extent that it is um, an interesting lens through which to come back and look at my primary interest, which is India. So I used a hundred word answer to it and I was very honest about it. I think that you are the best judge of where it fits most organically. You just do not, I would advise against pretending that there is a higher degree of China interest than there actually is. I think if you're honest about the extent to it, then I think the organic fit happens wherever you think it's right. Um, but yes, you do have to address it. You do not have to repeat it multiple times in the application. On the resume, I would actively avoid against color and fun fonts and anything that's going to make it look different from the norm. Um, usually the first step in a lot of these applications, and I don't I don't know for sure if this is what Schwarzman does, um, but is a computer generated survey of the, the CVs and resumes that they're sent. So the first layer um, is a filter. Either way, it's the job of the applicant, of the panel that's reviewing to remember every piece of information. So don't worry about sticking out through visual cues of any sort. Um, on furnishing additional details, no, you don't have to. Um, you're not going to be asked to substantiate anything but the academic credentials that you put down. So your transcripts are the only thing that they will ask you to substantiate. Um, so if you want to talk about a health condition, you want to talk about something that's personal, private to you, feel free to. Um, this is not, you know, there's no fact checking here that happens. Um, I am certain that I've missed other questions that you've asked, but maybe Mantra can step in. Yes. So um, the first first question, like the why China part was something very tricky. So uh, like I kind of tried to put it everywhere that I felt was relevant. For example, in the video, I briefly mentioned why China or the the my leadership essay like i used to play table tennis and once we had a tournament in which indian team lost to chinese national table tennis team and i had to bring in the sports part of how china has been uh, sort of dominant in the sport or and then but i mostly wrote about this in, in my statement uh, of purpose in which what i want to study during my time in china um the second part as ragini rightly said even after going to shoresman in our workshops it kind of showed us the way to write a uh, resume and that was a very like one page or tight you know black and white sort of a resume so keeping it black and white would probably be preferable third was about letters of recommendation please i might i might forget part of it but definitely yeah use all three sorry go on no i was basically saying that it says minimum three i can have four as well would you recommend having fourth one during our time it was two or three and i used all three um so if you can if the fourth one adds value if you can find someone who's very unique who can give a point of 
you know perspective to your letter of recommendation please it's always preferred um and lastly yes you don't need any as Ragini like you said you don't need any so you know attachments to your um, application excellent thank you Bhaskar. thank you so much thank you Bhaskar. uh there are a few questions in chat that have already been answered helpfully by the scholars but just for the interest of those who will watch this um, recording, I'm going to read out the questions and the answers, and then we we'll move back to live questions here. Um, do we need a general LOR or uh, an LOR specifically addressed to the Schwarzman office? Um, Nidhi has answered that it could be addressed as to whom it may concern and does not necessarily have to be addressed to the Schwarzman um, uh, office. Um, do you have to apply separately for the course, which is the master's program? And the answer is no, you don't have to apply. There's only one Schwarzman application that you need to submit and that application is for the um, fully funded program. Uh, there's a question about stipend. What is the stipend support provided by the program? Um, it is a fully funded, um, which basically means it takes care of your accommodation, food and travel around China and in addition to that, you're offered uh, 5,500 US dollars for the whole year. Um, we're going to come back to this question on leadership essay and I'll um, uh, ask Ragini to start with that. But before that, um, there's one more question uh, that I think I missed. Um, what were the global affairs questions? Um, and the answer is it's dependent on the interviewers, each of the scholars have got different questions at the end of their interviews, so you can't really predict the global affairs questions. Um, I'll actually turn to Ragni now to answer the um, question on what did your leadership essay look like? And perhaps Manthan and Nidhi can also pitch in uh, once Ragni has had a go at it. Yeah, absolutely, Manthan, Nidhi. Uh, would love to hear about your leadership essays too. Um, I actually spoke about a an incident where I was a formal leader of, um, well, I was a leader in the student council of the university I attended, and I spoke about a failure as a leader. Um, and this was something that at the time, most people who were giving me general advice in life said was a bad idea. Um, and in retrospect, it's something that I'm very glad I did. Um, because I think it got to what the task of the essay actually was, I realized in retrospect, which is to show um, not that you are flawless, because if you are flawless, why do you need this program? Um, but rather that you are committed to being a good leader and therefore recognize that it's a journey in some form or capacity. Um, and I think the one piece of advice that I would give you based on how um, my leadership essay was received is to just recognize that um, the the program is trying to talk, of, trying to, to draw attention from as diverse a type of a pool of leaders as possible. Um, and so the task falls upon you to show that leadership comes from diverse forms, capacities, whatever. Um, so even though I was talking about a formal office that I held, uh, the attributes of a leader that I was talking about was saying, look, I realize that a lot of the attributes are not what that taught to be. Um, turns out that something like being a listener is a lot more important to give credit for. So um, I, I'd say honesty is important for the entire application, but particularly here. Um, because this is where you show your individuality as an applicant. Yeah. Yeah, I can pitch in about um, the leadership essay. I wrote my essay about what I thought was the most genuine response um, at the time that I could think of was I was the president of the Economic Society at, at my school. I'm a recent graduate from my bachelor's program. So I wrote like an essay about like starting the club and scaling it up and um, trying to create like a culture of uh, entering graduate school among people in my university. And um, basically I tried to like pitch it as like, oh, like I increased the percentage of people who went to graduate school at the end of this, or I, I increased the number of like minorities who ended up like, um, you know, considering PhDs in economics and who want to become economists, things like that. So it was like a very like simplistic, like basic essay on uh, my thought process on leadership. And um, 
I would say that when it comes to leadership essays, just write about what genuinely feels important to you. It's okay if it seems like a low level activity that you think other people would probably laugh at like that. It doesn't matter as long as you feel like it genuinely encapsulates your experience with leadership. That's all you really need. And make sure that you talk about your thought process when it comes to leadership. But like it, it shouldn't just be like a listing of your resume. It should be like how you view leadership. Are you like a diplomatic leader? Do you connect people? Do you bring people together? Do you like scaling up ideas? Do you like institutional reform? Or do you like individual like one-on-one -on -one reform? Things like that. Like all these like ideas on leadership. You should be putting it down in uh, words and by be capturing it in a narrative. So that's what I would suggest for the leadership. By both of you, very inspiring. We never, like, I don't know why, when we were at Shawsman, we never really discuss our application. I wish we, I would have done that with all the other scholars. That would have been very inspiring too. Uh, but, you know, if you guys are listening, you know, one thing that Ragini and Niji wrote was like the most authentic and the most like real story that they could think of at that point. And I think that is true to me also. So I, for once in my life, I wrote something and did not edit it was this essay. Like I, I literally sat down and I wrote my first essay that came to my mind for the two hours. Uh, and I sent it to like, that is 95%, 99% the same essay that was submitted. So um, mine was the story. Like I was born and raised in this town of Ahmednagar and how I started playing table tennis and like sort of the, the journey that my, me and my family traveled to become like, you know, from, a small town player to playing for India and then what inspired that change of like giving up that sport and you know finding my you know restarting from somewhere after high school and then after that my second journey as of, of some of like you know thinking what does true leadership mean in India and writing a book um, on that and like the four years that involved in sort of in that process and those were like just two starting paragraphs but then the last and the major chunk of the uh, writing was involved in sort of how my definition of leadership has have evolved. And that's where I, I said earlier, I used to think achievement and titles is leadership. But then I gave a quick anecdote about how I started a nonprofit after my high school. And I was subsequently kicked out of my own nonprofit because at that point I was a very arrogant young chap and what I learned from that and then how what leadership means to me now and how I've evolved as a person and what I think this is the future of leadership in India so it was just like a whole story that I thought of at that point and that was it and I think at that time Christian Tanja used to be at the admissions and I spoke to him once before I applied and he's one of like you know truly a great staff member of the admissions and he was talking about in leadership uh they care about is the distance that you've traveled and how vulnerable you are and how honest you are with your story excellent uh thank you so much for sharing um your experiences and insights uh let's turn to anurag anurag you can ask your question hello everybody um thanks for the session i have three questions as well um so uh, these are these relate to different parts of the of the entire program, and it will help me to understand how I should frame my application. So the first question also relates to why China. Um, my question about this is that should we stay away from sensitive issues, for example, Uyghur, um, the issues that are heavily censored in China, for example, Uyghur population, even though it relates to something that I am really interested about. Um, my second question is, how was the study program in general? And it somehow it also relates to the first question, was that in the sense that, was it very uh, restricted? Um, were certain taboos, certain, sorry, uh, certain subjects considered taboos uh, relating to China? Or how did it go about? And the last question is, um, if you could not be part of the program, would you say that uh, you would be where you are right now in spite of the program, as in how did the program help you to be where you are now? Sorry for the long questions. In this one, let's start with Manthan and Nidhi can again be sandwiched between Manthan and Ragini. I think I'd like to answer a second question first because, dude, I think 
I just finished the program like two months ago and I'm still in the program in my head. And in general, also like we are very young, I think like in you know, early 20s. So I think the impact of the program is hard to be calculated at a very early stage. And I think if we can only see its effects like, you know, in few like tens of tens of years when we are at probably positions of power or something. But one immediate impact that I've had is the community it is so strong i it's been two weeks two two months in graduating and we still speak every week every weekend and with, with all the people from all around the world who are doing amazing things people are starting jobs at very high places in their governments in the private institutions and going for grad school or uh people getting married like you know they just inspire you and you know your game is just like so much above now like i remember if i would have just graduated from undergrad i would be have been like working somewhere not like you know some random place it's it would have been fine but now i just like my world is so much bigger that i aspire for bigger things and that is probably the one change that i've seen um and also second materially like when i was graduating two months ago my plan was to um go for like another like you know grad school and the day I was graduating I was like you know I will figure out things once I go home and like I spent the next week in Singapore crashing at a Schwarzman Scholars house I did a bunch of interviews in Singapore and like I landed in Mumbai I stayed at like you know crashed at another Schwarzman person's house did a few interviews and like literally 10 days after I graduated I had two jobs job offers in my hand at like two very established firms with people that I could see as my mentors in the future so those connections help a lot um I'll pause here and then we can take your first question I think because I'll um Ragini Nidhi Nidhi and Ragini uh I think Ragini should go for this one because I just came to Shorter right. College a week yeah. ago I don't think I have any insight on this yeah definitely I think I'm in a different space than I would have been if I hadn't um, opted for the program um, and so I think I would describe the impact of the program personally and professionally I would at least distinguish it between them um, very sharply because while there is a huge space of intersection between the two I think as you walk away from it it's definitely um, an important professional opportunity. It's uh, an academic program with great prestige and merit and is a huge stepping stone to any sort of study or professional opportunity you'd want to pursue thereafter, especially if you're in a space that connects to China in any way. Um, but personally, it is also the sort of program that cannot but be rewarding. Um, I don't think I've personally grown in any experience I've had uh, the way I, I have in one year in China. Um, and I think well, I couldn't agree more with Manthan uh, with the respect to the community. It's an extraordinary opportunity to gain friendships, deep relationships with like-minded people. You also have a chance to see what, um, for lack of a better way of putting it, the best of the best of the world's um, academic institutions offer you. Um, and in that sense, Schwarzman is a much more diverse program than most. Um, you don't just meet people from the West. Um, you meet people from every pocket, every corner of the world. And I, I can honestly say that I probably will never be in as diverse a room as I was in in the average Schwarzman um, community room. Um, and I think there's huge growth, huge personal reward in that. Professionally, um, if you're interested in India, if you're interested in uh, anything relating to the de developing world, um, if you're interested in questions of development, of policy, of poverty, of public institutions, not understanding China is no longer an option for any of us. Certainly in India, if you come out of this program, you're returning into this to India with a year of work in China, you understand the country to a level that very few people in this the, the policy IR ecosystem here do. So that's professionally a huge advantage. Um, I had a similar um, wonderful experience as far as professional roles post Schwarzman, um, you know, getting the right connections in the right places. So yeah, material impact on both. On the sensitive questions, not talking about it, talking about it, look, I don't think there is a hard and fast guideline on this. And in the end of the day, this is a question for your own discretion. Um, 
I think what the conversations we had in the Schwarzman classroom were as close to complete freedom as you can get in a society that um, likes to not talk about certain things. Let's put it that way. Um, no one is going to look very kindly upon an application where you are calling out something that is hugely controversial in your first application to the space. Um, in the end of the day, I think that it depends on how you phrase it, how you talk about it, the context is everything. But I would say use your judgment. Um, and sure, there are certain things that are not easy to talk about. Um, you do have an advantage over your Chinese peers because you are an international student, but also not that much of an advantage because, I mean, many of us still have Indian passports and so on and so forth. So it's a question of discretion. Um, and I think these are things that there are well-established social norms to. They're discussed. They are talked about. Um, you just have to really use your own discretion most of the time. Yeah. I hope that answers both parts. Also, just to jump in um, in how your life can change after you apply and get into Schwarzman, it, it really is a good pipeline if you want to come to the Western world. Like if you want to work in um, the US or UK, um, there's often a clear pipeline to like consulting companies and the private sector and um, just your immigration process to a country like the U.S. becomes infinitely easier. Also, Schwarzman scholars are now eligible for the high potential visas in U.K. So you get an immediate two year visa to the U.K. Um, if you get into the program. So those are all like benefits that add to um, your your like professional standing once you graduate from here. Excellent. Um, can we have Shishu uh, next? Yeah, uh, hello. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah, so uh, I, I had one uh, like query about my uh, essay. So since uh, uh, previous year I applied for Chilling and I couldn't get through it. And so I'm just trying to build uh, my essay from the perspective of Chilling. But again, I'm giving a touch of uh, this scholarship and I'm, I've changed slightly uh, from that perspective. But still, uh, I may need help of any mentor who can guide to it. So, so can I request for any mentor who can just go through my uh, essay once, and uh, it would be very helpful for me. Um, thank you, Shish. If you're a if you're a mentee with Project Edu Access, um, then you can email us on the email that we communicate um with you on and we will try and connect you to someone um yeah i hope that answers but if you're not a mentee with us um you can still reach out to us at info at project and we will try once again to connect you with someone um I yeah Great. Yeah, so uh, was one just uh, quick clarification. So previous year I applied, but I, I was with, uh, uh, I was getting mentorship by Eklavya uh, in the foundation. This year uh, also I applied to Project Edu Access because again, maybe uh, this year I'll just apply for few scholarships. So I don't know, I didn't get any email uh, response to the, uh, to uh, the second uh, uh, cohort of this yes. Year. Yes. So, uh, just uh, sorry, this is um not related to Shortman. Just a quick announcement that we are um in the last phase of reviewing, reviewing applications for the second cycle of the, the mentorship program, and you should hear from us in the next one week. Um, uh, if you applied in the second program uh, in the second cycle, those of you who, who applied in the first cycle, you've already heard from us. And you know how to reach out to us depending on what your status in the uh, program is. So Shishu, don't worry. You will hear from us um, very, very shortly. Um, Yukti, can we have you next? Hello. I hope I'm audible. Yes, of course. Yeah. You are. First of all, thank you so much for an enlightening session. I've been researching for Schwarzman since like two weeks now and it hasn't been as clear as this so thank you for making it a once one stop destination for understanding everything related to it regarding my question uh so first i have two questions the first one is related to the leadership essay yeah so the 
prompt uh, clearly uh, states that uh, define one specific instance but like uh, like you all also mentioned repeatedly just to show a journey of leadership basically how we evolved from one leadership uh, position to another like the personal impact of it can we mention like in, not uh, disjoint instances but instances that join but are not like just a specific instance maybe the focus can be that specific instance but can i show like previously i was not doing this right as a leader and now i am or would that be forbidden considering the fact that they are asking us to limit the 750 words to one particular instance and the second question that's related to the why china aspect so uh, like when i was researching why china uh, a lot of it focuses on a demonstrated experience so my experience has mostly been in the area of education but why i want to go to china is also to explore other areas say for example climate and tech that i have no experience in at this point but i really want to explore that area so in a case like that is it recommended that we uh, basically play it safe and kind of link it to the education aspect so that it shows that you are like you have some sort of experience or can we be honest here and say that there are multiple uh, reasons basically can can the area of why china not be as specific because like i just graduated this year and i'm trying to figure things out and it's not as clear so that was my other question thank you so much i can give it a shot and yeah so uh, both very relevant questions yukti i think during our time Two years ago for the leadership question, I remember we had like three prompts and we didn't have like from what I remember at Agni, I might be, please correct me if I'm wrong, but it wasn't like one specific instance. So there was like, for me, at least there was a scope from one of the prompts that I wrote on to write a journey and then kind of share what my meaning of leadership, leadership uh, story is. Um, so like, I, I can't comment too much, but if I would write that letter of, um, again, then I would have written about like my most recent and most relevant leadership initiative uh, and kind of substantiated on like how I have evolved, you know, give illustrations of how I've arrived at that point. So I would have like molded my story in a way to answer that question. But, but like, I don't think it is very hard and fast about like, you know, one instance is like start and ending with one instance. You can, it's like being a writer is like a storytelling and you can kind of substantiated by various stories uh to the second question i can relate with you so hard like i graduate like i was in my final year when i was applying for shorzman also and like my cv was and still is like all over the place it's business and finance and climate and sustainability and uh interest in global affairs and so but what i did was like I tried to show them that my trans, like there was a common thread, like an overarching thread that I tried to find was doing something for India, be playing table tennis and winning medals for India as a sport or writing book focused on India. And the third was like big challenge I see is at that point, Narendra Modi had announced the 2070 goals of net, net zero ambitions. And I was like, this is the next ambition for India. And I think all my experiences enable me to be a leader to helping India reach this goal. And this is how China is going to help me understand how net zero is reached in an economy like China, which I can bring back to India. So there's, there should be some common thread that you are substantiating on and that's where you can fit China in. And to your question, if you're into like education and then you're also passionate about sustainability, you could find some middle ground in terms of education for climate tech or, you know, things that you want to learn from China that like sort of taxonomies, right? Like Chinese have very well-defined taxonomies about um, net zero ambitions or the decarbonization goals for steel chemical. And you want to understand that very specific taxonomy that will help India or EUC BAM, like uh, European Union's carbon border adjustment mechanism that is affecting China a lot, but it, it's an opportunity for India. And you can, it like education for that can, 
play well for India. So you can find some way around it, I think. But I'll pause here and I think uh, Ragini might have some insights. And Neeti. Uh, I think something that I can, I can speak to the second question that you had in that I was also very confused about how I'm going to weave China into my application because it was never my plan from the beginning of college or high school to want to go do a master's program in China. Um, so it was something that I'd given less thought to than like a lot of other aspects of my application. So the first thing that I did was I went through all the disparate parts of the things that I'd done throughout college and even like beyond. And um, just like month and like it was all over the place. I'd done stuff like across different like interests and realms and industries. So I tried to find like a common theme that linked most of these different things that I was interested in. And then I was able to find a common theme, which for me was economic mobility. So then I like looked into things that I was interested in that related economic mobility to China. And obviously there's tons of like tons of interesting topics when it, as it comes to economic mobility there's tons of like government instituted barriers against mobility in china um and i basically wrote about my personal statement about how i would study that as part of my capstone project at Forthman college so i basically talked about how i would study economic mobility in china um when i would get here so it's mainly about trying to find a common theme that fits in that fits into your narrative uh something that indians don't emphasize as much but is very very big in the u.s is that um americans like to see like a story a narrative is like the biggest part of most of these application processes and the recommendation letters are the are like the um the people who kind of like substantiate your narrative so they kind of like drive home the points that you bring up in your essay um, and every single part of your application kind of like builds up this narrative so that at the end of their going through your application, there are a couple words that stand out in their mind. Like you could be the transportation person, you could be the economic mobility person, you could be the climate person. They want to attach you to a couple specific ideas. So um, I'm sure you can find a way to link China to that. It doesn't have to be like in your face. It can also be like subtle connections about why you're interested in China or what unique perspectives it can give you, if that makes sense. I'm sorry if that was too wig. Yeah, great answers, Nithi, Manthan. Yukti, if this is just at all helpful to your leadership essay, I would just say, um, great idea, but maybe dig a little bit deeper. If your ideas have evolved, why have they evolved? What made them evolve? and then find something, a specific instance, experience. It doesn't have to be, when they say instance, they don't mean a five minute window. It can be, you know, a long journey or whatever, but give them an anchor. I think this is a good writing advice in general for essays like this. Give them an anchor so that it's not just like, I used to be like this, now I'm like this. Just show them, map the change if you're talking about a change, uh, talking about how it happened. Um, but yeah, great questions. Excellent. Also, can I, uh, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but can I just do a quick follow up? Yes, you can, of course. Yeah. First of all, thank you so much for the answers. Really helped me gain clarity about the follow up. When you say that the leadership uh, can be an instance, uh, can it be an instance where I do not have a lot of uh, numerical proof as a numerical proof of the impact it has had? Say, for example, the biggest leadership um like experience for me was during the third wave of covid when we had founded this initiative on like it was a covid self help group of so of 10000 plus so that was that number i might still have but the impact of lives it touched because of course like we did it as an sos response and not like for numbers so i don't have the numbers for it to either write it in my cv but it does count like it has been the most transforming leadership experience for me so can i touch upon it or do you recommend i stick on to experiences that have okay impacted these many lives at these many yeah you don't need like hyper specific numbers uh, when i was referring to numbers i'd like to clarify i meant like generalization approximations of of like close to how many people you've impacted. It doesn't have to be 100. It can also just be groups of 10 people. Like that also counts as a as a leadership impact. So for sure, like bring that up. I think that's very cool. Yeah, absolutely. The You just want to be able to, to make sure that you are talking about something specific, but quantifying impact is 
um a good practice not a mandatory practice um i think your ex your um example sounds excellent go ahead run with it make your entire essay about it if you'd like to you would don't have to say x number of people had y increase in their net out like joy in life or incomes or whatever that's not the quantification they're looking for yeah excellent um sorry to interrupt can i ask a small last question before yeah. it ends Bhaskar, I will I'll just request you to part that for later because we have already um, given you an opportunity. I would like to read the questions and answers that are in chat and then I'll come back to you just um, in the interest of fairness. Uh, for those who will be watching this recording, there, are, there have been quite a few questions that have been answered in chat and I don't want to miss them. And one of the questions was, can we have all the LORs from the same institution or should each of them be from a different institution? And the answer is, um, it is recommended that the LORs come from a mix of academic and professional sources. It is okay if all the letters come from the same institution, but they should highlight different aspects of your background. The next question was, can a PhD scholar give an LOR or do I have to ask professors for LORs? And the answer is, as long as you can demonstrate a professional relationship with them, anyone can write your um, letter of recommendation. The only bar or prohibition is that they cannot be your friends or family members. Um, I think this was briefly touched upon in the live session as well. Uh, previously, um, the, the question is, previously my essay was selected for achieving. Um, can I build my essay as per that? Will that work? And the answer is yes, but try to adapt the essay to Schwarzman. Um, you, you can definitely use the same concept and expand on how it influences your leadership style. There's a very, um, you know, public announcement kind of a question, uh, an answer as well. The last date of applications um, is 19th of September. Then, um, so, so th there's a, a question that was repeated, so I'm not going to read that. Um, I'm going to quickly go to this question, which I think is quite substantive. Uh, this was, um, could you discuss how you went about your videos? And um, let me quickly read what our wonderful panelists have did well. Um, so Nithi wrote, make sure your video highlights aspects of you that you have not uh, bought, brought up previously and include things that you do for fun, your hobbies, interests, et cetera. For example, I had a radio show in college. So I framed it as an interview that I was doing on air in the radio station on why I want to go to Schwarzman College. Um, and um, what about Chinese language? Don't we need, uh, do we need Chinese language at all for the program? The answer is you can learn Chinese on campus at Schwarzman College. You do not need any Chinese or Mandarin knowledge. And uh, just to follow up on the video question, uh, Manthan posted that funnily enough, uh, my video was also about or shot at a radio station. Back then, I remember analyzing all the videos on YouTube and coming up with the 20 is to 20 is to 20 formula. Um, have th three backgrounds that represent you. For me, it was Table Tennis Hall, the orphanage, and the recording studio. The first bit is introduce yourself the way the world sees you. This will include the titles, the city, the university. Second is um, introduce the way you see yourself things that make you most happy, for example, teaching, reading, writing, and, and put in some impact there. And the third bit is highlight what you bring um, to the table, extra points if they are highlighted by your personal passions. And finally, Ragni um, offered another way of doing things. Um, I shot mine in one, go, in one go, sitting in my room in the middle of the night, nothing fancy. I talked for a minute about why I think the problems I care about are relevant to the world. I was, however, quite informal. I treated it like a conversation. So basically shoot something that shows you at ease just so people um, get your vibe. So I think that's quite detailed um, insight about the video, but I think Manthan, you want to chip in? Go ahead. Yeah. So 
uh, also like on the video there is like the formula is like what i felt right at that point there is like no winning formula to it whatsoever i've had successful like friends whose videos were them dancing in 12 ways that they have learned over every like zero words just dances in all the formats of da- dancing they knew or like people teaching someone how to make the dish that they most enjoy or um people just like you know going on a hike and then just recording on a selfie like you know just like on a video of like oh i just came for this hike and this hike means so much to me for this reason like it can be absolutely anything there's no formula per se i just thought this made sense to me at that point yeah they just want to know that you're a fun person to hang out with like that you're not going to be in, like very socially awkward or like hard to form connections with and you can show that through so many different ways so um be creative and do your thing great um another question as a philosophy student my interest primarily has been in analyzing certain aspects of the global affairs from certain perspectives of philosophy so without a professional experience so far in areas like public policy or economics but in leadership can i can someone be a worthy candidate um the answer is a resounding yes um the admissions committees understand that it is hard to get internships in india so it's okay if you just have strong leadership experiences also it looks like you demonstrate thought leadership through philosophical analyses so that counts quite a bit as well great so basket um over to you again and i'll keep an eye on chat and see if there are any questions that need to be read out again thank you so much uh, for for this uh, so my last question is basically that application says that you can write talk about five leadership roles that you did and with a short brief of a line or two and also ask you to uh, give five awards that you received in your last few years and maybe describe how how it shaped you again in a line or two i've also heard in panel talks that people say that in the cv as well please have a section of leadership as well does it in 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 a way if i'm already writing it in the application how do i make sure that it it's it has new content and not repeating in the application and in the cv itself i hope i was clear and audible yeah i'm happy to go uh, nithi if you want to go um so i would suggest uh, i think the main difference is specificity um you can have held professional r- roles um roles in school college whatever where leadership is not the primary focus um but in the listing of those five leadership roles you focus exclusively on the leadership components of it in your cv you do a more holistic conversation on the various roles responsibilities you had under it uh, i think also the leadership listing roles give you a little more space to um look at other forms of leadership things like a publication or something you wouldn't put under a leadership section in your cv but they would go under um this particular section in your application um as far as whether you should have a leadership section in your cv is concerned or not look i, I think it depends on whether you feel like you have enough content to put under there um don't probably the the standard advice people give out is don't create a separate subheading for a single thing have at least two things to talk about under that subheading if you're adding a subheading to your cv um separately uh it's not a mandatory section to have it's um there are no strict guidelines on that but again the the core advice here is just make sure that you talk about different aspects of it if you are talking about it twice uh and just recognize that you can use a broader type of responsibilities um under the application section than in the cv i hope that answers your question yeah it does thank you excellent uh, there's a question on, on location of interviews uh the interviews uh from the answers um looks like they happen in person and they are like your the cost of your travel to the interview location are won by the Schwarzman scholars program um and maybe during the pandemic or before they were um online for a bit but they are back to in person interviews great i think we have come to the end of the session exactly at um i think 
8 p.m. India time, if I'm not wrong. Um, and but before we um, close the session, uh, could I request the three wonderful panelists to give us just that one short, maybe two sentence thing that the applicant should keep in mind. And this time we'll start with Nidhi, we'll go to Ragini, and we will let Manthan have the last word. Uh, I would say if I had to summarize in two tips, the first would be to build a clear narrative with your application. I'm sorry for reiterating this a lot, but I think it's important for us to keep in mind. Make sure that all your activities and everything flow and there's like a clear um, emphasis on, it, on certain keywords, like things that kind of encapsulate your application as a whole. And the second is that have your recommenders highlight different parts of you. So um, have your recommenders highlight like either your research experience or your leadership experience or your professional experiences, or they can also alternatively highlight um, your sense of integrity, your leadership skills, or your um, uh, entrepreneurial skill sets. Like they should basically be highlighting different facets of you um, and kind of bolstering the narrative that you're building. Yeah, I agree. Um, so I think the the single most important thing I've learned from all the Schwarzman application successful Schwarzman applications I know is that there is literally no one way to do things, and therefore the most important thing becomes uh, honesty and genuineness. Um, while there is no perfect mold, a dishonest when I say dishonest, um, a disingenuous application is easy to tell. So uh, remember, you are trying to present a picture of a well-rounded individual. Uh, and you have multiple avenues to do it in. So break who you are down to core questions. I, I Someone told me that this was the most helpful advice I gave them. So I'm, I'm going to repeat that here. Take a, take a minute with a piece of paper. What is the one thing you want to get out of this year? What is the one thing bringing you to the program? And why you bring your application back down to those handful of core truths as often as possible. That's it. And thank you all for your time. These are great pieces of advice. I think um, mine would be two main things. Firstly, like, be brutally authentic. Whatever you've done, be completely own it up and be extremely honest about it. Don't fabricate or you know, you know, inflate things that you might have not done because even if they don't ask about it, maybe your confidence in the interviews might go down for that. So being absolutely authentic about who you are, what values you have, principles you have, and what you, you're trying to portray is extremely important. And for the leadership component, I think you should be, think about your own leadership so deeply that you should be able to boil it down to one key sentence. And and maybe that will enable you to kind of anchor your whole story in one thing. So for me at that point was leadership to me means not uh, really micromanaging people or uh, being authoritarian but it was to have a share, like sort of a north star a, a shared vision and sort of inspire or motivate or cheerlead everyone that around me to reach that sort of north star was something that I could boil down and so my whole journey from how early I was authoritarian or uh, more uh, stricter to how I've become later was able like I was able to kind of write it around it so like you should think very hard if if you want you can read a bunch of like leadership material on like you know books that kind of define things if that helps um, and also like one of the um who was that like yukti and bhaskar were asking us questions and like at some point they asked like their story to us and they're trying to you know speak it out loud so we were kind of soundboards to them so don't don't hesitate in terms of reaching out to friends or family or mentors and using them as soundboards to just like speak out loud what your leadership story is, what your application is. So you'll be able to kind of narrate who you are to someone and that you'll be able to, you know, while speaking out loud, you'll have opportunities of putting things in various aspects of the application that you might not have if you just like sit in your own room and write about things. So this would be my... I write, sorry, Samir, I knew it wasn't one line or two, but um, no, thanks but, so much for having me. No, no, that's that's completely fine. And I think, I mean, we never stick to time anyway. So 
um, it, it is true to our character here, especially in, in our sessions. Um, I think everything that Nidhi, Ragni, and Manthan have told us towards the last bit of this session is not just advice for the application, but advice for life. So if you just hear it for the application, I'm sure you will all be in good hands. Um, well, thank you so much, Nidhi, Manthan, and Ragni for doing this session and for agreeing to do this at such a short notice. I know we reached out to you quite um, late and, and thank you so much for uh, taking out time and sharing all the experiences and your insights with participants. I'm sure they have benefited from your collective wisdom. Um, and yeah, they are all good to go now. Um, those of you who are our mentees, uh, if you have questions, you know how to reach us. Those of you who are not, the ID is info at projectedueaccess.com, but also um, very happy for you to connect with us on social media. Um, especially uh, LinkedIn and uh, Instagram. And this recording, the recording of this session will be available on our YouTube channel. All you need to search is um, um, Project Edu Access. Yeah, well, thank you so much everybody for joining and thank you Manthan, Nidhi and Ragini once again. Thanks for having us. Good luck everyone. Thank, thank you. you, good luck folks.